Back in 1976, a talented and beautiful young soprano from Kenosha, Wisconsin joined the Lawrence Welk Show, and she's our special guest today. Please welcome Kathy Sullivan. Thank Hi, you, Mary Kathy. Lou. <laughs> so good to have you here. Thank you. It's great to see everyone. Now, you'd only been on the show about a year. Yes, 1977. Mm -hmm. Does it bring back some memories for you? It sure does. Just seeing all the, the wonderful people that we worked with. It was, you know, I was right out of college when I joined the Lawrence Welk Show, and um, everyone was so nice, you know, flying from little town in Wisconsin to Hollywood. It was just such a thrill, and looking at it, we were all so young. <laughs> <laughs> when you were a little girl, did you and your family watch the Lawrence Welk Show? Oh, absolutely, and I hear this from so many people when I travel. My mother did the same thing. Saturday night was a ritual, watching the Lawrence Welk Show while I sat on the floor and she rolled my hair for Sunday school the next day. How many people do you hear that from? <laughs> yeah, they either peeled yeah. the potatoes for Sunday dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I guess like every little girl, a ballerina at one point. But as I got older and more into music, believe it or not, I wanted to be a symphony conductor. I remember I had a little record player in my bedroom, and uh, somebody at my church found an old wooden baton. It was about this long and very thin, and they gave it to me, and I can remember spending hours putting classical records on my record player and just conducting away, <laughs> <laughs> looking in the mirror to see how I looked. <laughs> <laughs> now, most people start music lessons for their chosen career when they're very young, but you said you didn't start voice lessons until college. That's right. Um, I entered college actually as a cello major. It was music, and I had sung all, all my life, but I started playing the cello in seventh grade, and um, an interesting story about that is we still watch the Lawrence Welk Show, and at that time, Charlotte Harris was the cellist, and she was the only woman in the band. And I remember my father saying, when I first started playing, now look, Kathy, if you really practice hard, maybe someday you can get on the Lawrence Welk Show. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I continued with the cello. And of course, I sang all my life, but somehow, I guess, having something tangible seemed a better prospect for a career. <laughs> so I uh, went to college as a music major, cello, and uh, I did start taking voice lessons. And at the end of my first year, um, my voice teacher called me in after my voice exam in front of the whole voice faculty. And they said, my dear, we think you should change your major. And so I did, and I never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> so you majored in voice mm -hmm. with a concentration in opera. Yes, I took four different languages. and. Um, I was very intense. It was, I always considered it kind of like being an athlete. You had to really be in good vocal shape to sing opera. But I never really enjoyed it um, as much as popular music. So I guess it wasn't meant to be. So how did you get to the Lawrence Welk Show? Well, I was just beginning my uh, senior year in college. I had returned home from doing summer stock. And um, a friend called me, an old roommate called me. She said, Lawrence Welk is coming to town, and the television station is sponsoring a contest to find the champagne lady of the day. Well, I entered the contest, and I won, and uh, it was all college girls. And when he came to town, they picked me up in the limousine, and we went to the airport. I was with Mr. Welk all day long, and I got to sing on the concert that night with I the band. I remember that yes. night. <laughs> and uh, he called me back, and well, his manager came to where I was sitting in the audience after the concert was over, and he said, Mr. Welk wants to see you in his dressing room. So he led me back to the dressing room, and here was Mr. Welk changing his socks. <laughs> and he looks up at me, and he says, my dear, you have the purest voice I have ever heard. Would you like to join my band? And what a shock that was. Um, I called my folks because they weren't able to be at the concert that night. And my dad said, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You can always go back to school, but you'll never get another chance like this. You were right on the verge of graduation. Too. I was, I was. But two weeks later, I flew, flew out to Los Angeles and I stayed with the show until he retired in 1982. What did you learn from him? I guess the, the best lesson was to love what you do and do what you love. He truly loved his work. You could tell, you could see it in every aspect, whether it was rehearsal or especially when he was out on stage, on tour. Um, 
to have a passion for what you do and, and really follow, follow your heart. And I think that I've, I've been able to do that, um, learning from him. You've been really successful in the gospel field. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? That actually came about through several of the people on the Welk Show. Um, Norma Zimmer and Tom Netherton both had the same Christian agent in Los Angeles. And um, they introduced me to him. And I had become a Christian in college, a born-again Christian, and uh, had a real desire to sing contemporary Christian music. And he got me started singing in churches around in the Los Angeles area and slowly branching out further and further. And uh, when Mr. Welk retired in 1982, I went into it full time and I traveled full time for the next 10 years. You also did a lot of recordings. Yes, I recorded four gospel albums. Um, the most recent, um, not recent anymore, but back then uh, with the Budapest Symphony in Hungary. And your gospel work took you to Africa? Yes, I worked with World Vision for a time and uh, did a tour of South Africa. Was that exciting? It was, it was, it was wonderful. Um, but it was also a learning experience. Um, they still had apartheid then, and we went out to a lot of the remote villages that had not had rain in 10 years, and you could see the, the rain clouds coming across the horizon, but they never quite got to where they needed the rain. And it was, it was truly an experience of learning for me. Now, you met and married your high school sweetheart. Yes, we met. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yes. How did that happen? Because that was years later. Yes, we, um, we uh, broke up in college, actually. And uh, he moved to Milwaukee. He was, he's a CPA. And I moved, of course, to Los Angeles. And um, we lost track of, each, track of each other for about 15 years. And in um, the summer of 1985, I was scheduled to give a concert at the First Baptist Church in Atlanta. And some good friends that we used to double date with back in high school had built a home in, in Atlanta. And my husband was already living in Dallas and had been promising to come visit them. Well, they saw the news article that I was going to be in concert, called him and said, come this weekend and we'll all go to the concert together. That was uh, the summer of uh, 85, and we were married at Christmas. It was love <laughs> at second sight. <laughs> <laughs> and you have two fabulous daughters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to explain the fact that you have a commercial driving license that lets you drive <laughs> a 22-passenger bus. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new career. Um, I am full-time activity director at an active living retirement community, White Rock Court in Dallas. It's right in my neighborhood, three minutes from home. It's so convenient, and I just love it. And I do drive the bus, I do, and it's, it's just a blast. I love every aspect of the work. What would you say was the best part of your years on The Welk Show? Absolutely the people. You know, you hear so often people, the question, was it really as fun? Was it really a family like it seems to be? It was. It really was. We were friends off the show as well as on the show. We, we played together uh, on the show and off the show. And um, uh, even today, everybody is just so dear and, and so real. I think that was the, the thing. Everybody is real, just like they seem to be. Well, I know I'm glad you're part of the musical family. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thanks so much for being here. It's been my pleasure. And thank you all for joining us once again.